we have a, a treat this morning, and uh, with no further ado, I'm gonna. Uh, we got two lined up to share that I'm gonna get uh, get over here and share too. Before that, we have one of our sisters in the Lord uh, over here. She wants to just give a word of mahalo to the body. So, Gloria, come on up. Come in. Uh, uh, are you here? There she is. Shallow purple mic. Check. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Um, for you that don't know, um, my husband was a veteran for many years, and um, this is Pat, and uh, he went home with the Lord, and um, since 2002, he's been uh, diagnosed with Agent Orange. He's had about eight different types of cancers. He's donated his body um, to the veterans, and um, he's passed on November 4th. But I'm here today to um, just thank the body here. Um, what bring to mind this morning was uh, Corinthians 1. Love bears all things, believes in all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And saying this, um, I wanted to thank our precious opportunity for our Lord. Um, thank the Lord for this journey that he put my husband and me on with both of our cancers. He's given me the strength to take care of my husband all these years and the strength to endure my chemo, radiation, all my surgeries as well. And what's amazing is the support. And what came to mind this morning too was that um, Ecclesiastes is 4-9. Um, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. What brought to mind is Pastor Hiss and Tara. Um, the support, the encouragement, the body shown me through my journey of walk with Christ, um, how the body could come together. And I just thank Pastor for coming in in such a short time, um, but been there from day one that I met them. I was here, but I wasn't here long. My hat wasn't laid here too long. It was taken, so the last five years I've been up at the hospital with my husband. And every day it was a different walk for me and my husband, but we were able to share the Lord. We reached a lot, and a lot came to the Lord in the process of it. So I guess we, my husband and I looked at it more of a journey and a plan that God had for us. And through this journey, the body was part of it. And I thank the body for being there for me and my husband. Um, the support, the encouraging, the prayers, the verses, the taking. Some of them flew up to see us, too, as well. And um, through this beautiful example the pastor has given the body of and showing us who Christ really is and how to walk the walk, not just talk it, but to walk it, is what expressed more to me than anything. And what was said at the service, I did a celebration. I didn't do a funeral. I did a celebration. I did a very different. I had a party. And what was nice, it brought four congregations together. Um, different churches um, came together, but we celebrated here on earth. Instead of waiting till we went home, we were able to celebrate here. Um, and that's what my husband would have wanted. And I'm so grateful, and there's really no words that can express my gratitude of what all of you have done. I mean, you've come to my house to clean and my yard and been there for me since I came back and that meant a lot to me because this walk and journey that I'm in now I really don't like it <laughs> I've been with my husband 36 years and it's been a blessed one so thank you for the words can express how I feel in my heart during this difficult time and 
the prayers that you've given me. So let not your light shine before men in such a way that they may see the good works and the glorify your Father who is in heaven, Matthew 560. Um, I just want God to bless you and award you for the kindness that you've shared to me and my family through these hard times that we have gone through. So I love you. I thank you for all the hands that prepared the food, the band, the people that stood up within two weeks. I, it was amazing how God just boom, boom, boom. And this, he's always like that. And that's what I love about him is within two weeks, he put everything together um, through the process of this body of Christ. And it's because of the head of this body is what brought everything together as one whole body for me and my family. So uh, I want to thank you so much. I just, there's no words I can express, but I love you. I praise the Lord for you. Pastor, I love the words you gave as my family don't know the Lord. They were very touched. I love the fact that my former pastor that I grew up with, that he was announced because that's where Pat and I grew up with the Lord. And that meant a lot to me, that they were recognized more than anything because he's the one that helped me grow, and now I'm here to grow through them. So I am truly blessed uh, for those special words. Thank you. Gloria, come in the middle here so we can pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Come in the middle. If you have your bulletins, you turn at the back, you'll see Gloria's beautiful face and the dear Princess Chantel there as well. He who believes in me, though he dies, shall live again. That's what Jesus said. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Amen. There's hope in Christ. And so stretch your hands out this way. Thank you, Lord. Receive your praise. Even as we sang this morning, Lord, you alone, you're worthy of it all. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us to be salt and light, make an impact, be glorified. Thank you for the body of Yeshua, the body of Christ. When one rejoices, all rejoices. When one is troubled, burdened, Lord, we all carry it together because of your aloha, because of your agapao. Strengthen glory in the seasons ahead. Strengthen Chantel as well. And Lord, all, especially in the body, who are downtrodden, who are just emotionally, Lord, just wrecked, brokenhearted. You are close to them. We pray for strength all across the board upon those who are hurting. Lord, we thank you that you're not just the glory and the lifter of our heads. You're the man of sorrows and the prince of peace as well. And so we bless you today. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Chantel. Bless Chantel and bless Gloria. Well, Malia is going to come up here. Malia Wong just came back from Papua New Guinea. Three months, two and a half months there. She's got a seed, a word of encouragement. And when she's done, another sister in the Lord's going to come up here and share as well. And then I'm going to get up there. And they, you, you'll turn your song sheets over. You see that we've set a track down. So uh, with no further ado, put your hands together for Malia Wong. <laughs> Yeah, as many of you guys know, I just came back from Papua New Guinea, um, being there for three months. And uh, most of what we were doing for that three months, the ministry that we were doing was encouraging um, the, the saints and the church body over there. So we would have um, church services every Sunday or even like weekly services. We would do house to house ministry. Um, and we would even do open air street preaching. Um, and for these ministry times, we would always have things prepared. We had skits and dances and testimonies and mini sermons and words of encouragement and um, always share the gospel at the end. But most of our time and most of our ministry that we did was spontaneous spirit-led ministry. 
Um, this would be people coming and asking us for prayer. This would be us going to people's houses and, and speaking encouragement over them or um, someone in the team getting a word, of a word of wisdom or a word of encouragement for someone and going to, to talk to them about it. And um, one of my favorite memories of, um, or one of my most exciting um, experiences of spontaneous spirit-led ministry is our last village, Homape. And um, w it was during a church service, and at the end we, we would ask people if to come up if they wanted to receive prayer. And um, uh, first, no one came up, but then God um, kept giving me the word um, marriage and um, family. And so I was like, okay, so there must be someone here who needs encouragement for that. And then um, as soon as I heard that, this woman came up and um, I talked with her and her name is Sarah. And I th um, she had told me that she had left her husband and her kids to go live with her mother in the same village, but just a, a different house. Um, and yeah, she was feeling very convicted that she had to go and go back to her family and um, make amends with them. And of course, I was like, okay, God, I'm, I guess you want, must wanted to speak, you wanted me to speak to her. You gave me marriage and family, and this woman is in need of encouragement for this. Um, so then we prayed, and um, I had got, I got um, verses and pictures um, to encourage her, and um, she, was, she was crying, and um, I could tell that God was definitely touching her heart, and, um, and at the end, she asked if she could pray, and so she prayed um, for God to soften her heart. And that evening, it was a, um, a rest night, and so all of us team, we were just sitting in the house, just like reading or sleeping or r relaxing. And um, she comes up to the house and asks, asks for me. And so I go, and she said, um, she tells me, so would you like to come to my house? <laughs> and so I had to ask my leaders, of course, but they said yes. And so I walked with her to the house where her husband, her kids, and um, her mother, her father, and all, um, all her family were there too. And she had, so that after that prayer session, she had went home and told her family about it. And, um, and so after I got there, after, they, after we greeted each other and sat down, they all like stared at me and looked at me. I was like, okay, what's going on here? And so she turns and looks at me and she's like, okay, you can speak now. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so yes, they, <laughs> because they had heard that I had a, a prayer or conversation with them, they had um, all came together in this one house to hear me encourage them. So I took a deep breath. <laughs> a quick intercessory prayer. <laughs> and yeah, I began to um, go into depth of what I was sharing with um, the wife, um, with Sarah. And um, yeah, after that, um, the whole family, um, her, her husband, her kids, her parents, they um, recommitted their lives to the Lord and um, they surrendered, yeah, their house and their family. Yeah, uh, yeah. I. So from this story, I want to encourage us to be ready at all times. Um, 2 Timothy 4, 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and teaching. And 1 Peter 3, 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Every moment that we have in this life is a ministry opportunity, not just the time set aside for church or ministry or programs. Um, every moment that we have with another human being is an opportunity to encourage them. We don't know how they're, um, what th what another person is going through or, or how they're feeling, but Abba Father does. And we need to be willing um, to be his vessel, to be his voice, to encourage them. Um, and when these times come, we shouldn't be shocked or we shouldn't be surprised because it's life, people. Um, we are going to be used 
as his vessels. And so we should always be ready to give a word of encouragement or um, uh, a word from the Lord. When, and when these times come, uh, when people ask for prayer or when they need a word of encouragement, we're not always going to have our notes with us. <laughs> this was something that I, <laughs> in Papua New Guinea, I, I struggle with a lot because I'm a very set, I need like preparation for things. But God had to, had to, I needed help from the Lord, always. But um, yeah, that he, he would give me the verses right then and right there or um, give me a word right then and right there. And so how can we be ready? How can we be ready to be used? Um, the first thing is putting on our armor daily from Ephesians 6. When we are ready, when we, um, in the morning, I, I like to pray out, um, the word or the armor of God to put it on from the top of my head to the from the helmet to the sandals um, to always be ready that way um, in the day when something comes up we can say okay I have my armor I we know what to do Lord give me the words the second thing would be um, to be full of his word and full of prayer um, this is the sword of the spirit and we have um, and when we are equipped with the sword, then we can um, do a mighty work. Um, and the third one is to be always willing. We must always be willing to speak to one, to speak to someone, to pray for someone, to encourage someone. Um, yeah. So I just want to en encourage you guys um, to be ready and um, yeah, to be full of His Word. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Let's welcome Sister Colleen. Sister Colleen, put your hands together for our sister here, Sister Colleen Mayer. Thank you, Malia. So I do uh, want to thank our lovely uh, worship ushers that brought us to the throne this morning. It was glorious, and I just uh, thank you for that. And uh, I just was reminded um, yesterday, Roger and I were at the uh, Hawaiian Islands Ministry Conference in Honolulu, and we sang Cornerstone with a huge worship band and big speakers and thousands of people, and it was glorious. And we come here, and we have beautiful, lovely voices and wonderful acoustic uh, accompaniment with a few people, and it's glorious. And I think I'm getting a lot of feedback here. Either I need to talk louder or <laughs> so they can turn it down. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but in any case, we're t where two or three or thousands are gathered in his name, he is in their midst, and it is so wonderful to be with with this body, you are truly our ohana while we're here in Hawaii, and we, we appreciate that. And the other uh, thought that came to me while we were worshiping, um, You Are My All in All, uh, uh, written by Dennis Jernigan, and about like 25 years ago, <laughs> I was at a music conference where he gave his testimony, and that just, it came back to me while we were uh, singing that song that the Lord brought him out of a season of unnatural attractions, and he is now married and has, I believe, nine children, so I think he's actually beat you guys. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, our worship time was so wonderful today, and I just thank you for that. Uh, now, last year at this time, uh, Pastor Izzy called me up front, and he asked me to share with no prior warning, uh, which is apparently a thing here at <laughs> Crossroads, but I didn't know it was a thing, and so <laughs> it sort of took me by surprise. And if I even had a thought in my head by the time I walked up here, it, it totally vanished. Um, but it did teach me something, and you know, Pastor Izzy's always teaching us, and actually it was the same word that Malia just gave to us, is be prepared. <laughs> um, and that, that same verse in First Peter came to me, always be prepared to give an answer. But that being said, I did get forewarning this time, which I appreciate, because whether we're 
giving a spontaneous word or something that's prepared that God has laid in our heart and wants time to flesh it out in us and for others. Um, both of those are good things. So the thought that's been percolating in my mind is actually a pretty simple one, but uh, I wanted to share this with you. The thought is, if you feed them, they will grow. You know, we feed our children, and they grow up, and they outgrow their clothes, and we have to buy new ones, and uh, we feed ourselves. Sometimes we grow in ways we don't appreciate. Um, and in Hawaii, we have this beautiful vegetation, has lovely amounts of water these days, and uh, the volcanic soil that gives its nutrients to help it to grow. So what we feed grows. And the same thing happens with our thought life. Whatever we feed ourselves grows. And if we dwell on events that, um, or people that make us angry, then our anger and our frustration grows. And if we feed ourselves anxious thoughts, then our anxiety grows. And some of us um, are control freak worriers. If we just worry enough about it, maybe it won't happen. Or if we worry enough about our children, they're going to be okay. And it gives us this illusion of control. If we just worry about it enough, we can control what happened. And then there's other of us uh, that are worst case scenario worriers. And so if we miss a deadline at work, and then our boss is going to be mad, and we're going to get fired, and we won't have any money, and we will kicked out of our apartment and we'll have to live on the street and we'll have to push a, a shopping cart down the, the sidewalks and then somebody will steal our shopping cart and then <laughs> and then we won't even have a plastic bag because they banned them all. So we'll just have nothing. <laughs> but um, or, or perhaps you're a student and you are an A student. You are used to getting those A's but you get a D. And now your entire grade point average is ruined. It's totally ruined. You're not going to get into the college you want to get into. You won't get the job you want to have. Your, your life is a failure now <laughs> because of that. So as we feed these anxious thoughts, they do grow. So what do we do with these anxious thoughts? It's not that life is always going to be hunky-dory. You may not have gotten into the school that you wanted to get into. Or you actually may have been homeless or are on the verge of homelessness. The Bible tells us that in this world, we will have trouble. We're not going to avoid pain and suffering and injustice. But what does the Bible say about how to handle those anxious thoughts? And we find some good instruction in Philippians 4. Beginning in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. Well, that's easier said than done, isn't it? It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, every problem, every circumstance, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Ah, prayer. And then what happens after that? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Ah, peace. <laughs> that peace of God. The Amplified Bible says it this way. And the peace of God, that peace that reassures the heart, that peace, which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds, in Christ Jesus, is yours. So what else should we be doing? Those anxious thoughts may be lurking about in the background. Our mind is not a vacuum, and unless we feed it some new thoughts, the old ones are going to come sneaking back in. And if we read on, uh, verse 8 tells us what we can think about instead. Whatever is true noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, 
If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And again, in the Amplified Version, verse 8, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. So the things that we feed our mind with are going to grow. So if we want to grow peace, we think of those things that are pure and true and lovely and admirable. But what about those things that aren't so lovely? We get a bad medical diagnosis or our child makes a decision that breaks our heart. We can look for God's goodness and provision. His word tells us that he is good even when things are bad. He's always with us, and he never leaves us or forsakes us, even if we should be in a dire situation such as homelessness. He is still there, and he still loves us. And what if our fears come true? Our older son was a very bright child, but as a freshman in high school, he thought homework was just busy work that he didn't need to do if he already knew the answers. I mean, why bother if you already know the answers? So his, his freshman grades weren't great. By the time he was a senior, though, he figured out some things, and he was getting a A's in AP classes. But his final grade point average was affected by those earlier grades. So he didn't get into the schools he had hoped to get into. Uh, he went to the school where he was accepted, but he was not a happy camper when we took him to college that day. But that at that school, he got a good education and he made some great friends. And he was involved in Christian organizations there. Then as a junior, he decided to transfer to a Christian school where he met his future wife. He graduated, he got a great job, and he's involved in his church and is a wonderful husband and dad. So those early grades, while they seemed to put a wrench in his plans, they didn't ruin his life. God was at work and brought about good things, even out of those detours. So feed your minds on things that are true and lovely and admirable. What we feed grows. We develop an appetite for those things that we feed on. We want more and more of them. And just be aware that those things that you stop feeding may protest. Uh, maybe you've decided that you're feeding on too many negative digital media sites and you need to not go there anymore. They're going to beckon to you, feed me, I'm starving, you've got to come back, I need some more. Uh, so it may, take may take time for those appetites to diminish. So keep feeding what you want to grow. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the strength and the courage to keep your mind stayed on God. Isaiah 26.3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So feast <coughs> on these thoughts. Thank you, Lord. Wow. No stinking thinking. Romans chapter 12. Be transformed, metamorphoto. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, what is the acceptable, what is the perfect will of God. Two contractions. First one, want to be used by God, you better be available. How many of you would say right now, right here, I want to be used of the Lord and today, like the song that we sang, the last song there, I surrender all today. I'm going to surrender and make myself available to the Lord, available to the Holy Ghost, right where you stand, right where you're sitting. If that's you, stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. I want to be available to the Lord. You know that we can actually be available without availing ourselves. It's very, po very political. We can, take, we can infer the taking of a stand, but yet we're actually fortifying our, our plateau our lethargy, it's a collusion with atrophy, 
we collude with it. You've got to be sold out all the way. Right where you stand, just right there, surrender to the Lord. Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Apparently, I'm still alive today. There's breath in my nostrils, so you're not done with me. But sometimes we can be alive, and yet we can actually cancel ourselves out. We've got to be available. We've got to avail ourselves to the Lord. Right where you stand, that's your prayer. Just go and pray it out. Lord, I surrender to you. Use me, Lord. Use me anytime. Use me. I'm open. Use me for your glory. Use me. The second one there, you may be seated. Maybe it applies to you again. I'm going to ask you to stand again if it applies to you. That second contraction there that came through, spiritual contraction, some of us, we just need that. Our mind, we feed our minds with junk, and then we are surprised when things happen and this stuff just comes out. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so shall he be. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You want to be transformed? Renew your mind. Get into the Word of God. With all that's happening, she's not talking about denial. Don't deny the, what's happening out there, but... What you can actually do is quarantine yourself from it. Make sure that that plutonium does not invade your life. Be aware of what's happening, but stay grounded in the Lord, in His love. If that's you, you've given too much airtime, too much airtime to the negativity, and you see it just insipid. It's beginning to metastasize. It's affecting your soul. It's affecting your relationship. This is the day the Lord has made. If that's you, stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. Today, I'm committing to no more stinking thinking. Today, I'm committing to, I'm going to get into the Word of God and let the Spirit of God transform the way I think. We give too much air time, too much air time in the mind, too much. Give it over to the Lord. Be anxious for nothing, it says, but in everything through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And then the peace. Notice peace comes after you've turned everything over to God. Isn't that amazing? And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard. That's actually a Greek word for garrison. A Praetorian garrison will garrison your heart. Imagine that. Picture that. A hedge of Praetorian, uh, 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 Praetorium, uh, Roman legions that stand for peace. And they're guarding your hearts. They actually come and set a perimeter. But that happens after... It's the aftermath after what happened before. You turn things over to God. Turn your anxiety. Turn it over to the Lord. Go for it. If you can, lay hands on your mind. Lay hands on your mind. Lord, forgive me for stinking thinking. I've given too much airtime to negativity. Affecting my, it's skewered my vision. Lord, thank you for the helmet of salvation. Thank you for the breastplate of righteousness. Thank you for the belt of truth. Thank you for my feet shod and prepared the gospel of peace. Thank you for the shield of faith that can quench every fire dart of the enemy. Thank you for the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, today. Thank you. Thank you. That belt of truth, whatever is true, meditate on that. Dwell on that. Chew on that. Give me a heart for your word, Lord. I turn, Lord, every inch of my life, I surrender to you. For when you are Lord... Every inch of my body, of my life belongs to you. You scream that mine, that's what you say, mine, you belong to me. Lord, I turn my mind over to you. Give me a heart for your word. Cleanse me for the glory of Jesus. Somebody said amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now turning your song sheets over. The third contraction coming up. I hope you're being equipped and being encouraged here this morning. Been greatly encouraged. I, I need a bulletin. Someone give me a bulletin, please. I need a bulletin. One of the bulletins back there. I had one initially, but then, thank you, brother. Thank you, Lord. Remind me, saints, after we're done to pray for Roger and Colleen. They're, they're flying out on Friday. Flying out on Friday, headed back to Minnesota. Our text this morning is in the book of Acts, Acts of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 2, if you can, turn there with me, please. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 40 to 47. 
the Holy Spirit, the promise of God has been poured out. It is not the birth of the church. It is the empowering of the church. God has always had a people. And so we thank God for the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit. Looking at the topic of our discourse this morning, read with me. The Holy Spirit filled church. The Holy Spirit filled believer, individual temple, or collectively believers. If you glance to the right, you'll see Berean Christians. Acts chapter 17, verses 10 to verse 12. That word church is there. That's the, you, you can actually, when you get to that site, drop that index down. G for golf, and then the numbers are 1577. Drop that on your drop-down menu. Make sure that the King James Bible has been selected, and you will grow in your lexicon. That's the word church. And the reason why I did that is to remind us that the word church has always in its mention, it's always a spiritual people, a people who are called out. Never a building, but the spiritual habitation, the people of God. Jesus didn't come for a building. He came for a people. Thank God for buildings that keeps us nice and cozy during incremental weather. However, it's the people that he died for, and that's really crucial. It's a term that's used in the Greek world and the Roman world as well for jury duty. How many of you have been called, have served in jury duty, part of your civil duties there? Let me see you. Raise your hand. When you get that letter, know that it traces its etymology, its, its origins back to the, the Greco world, the Roman world. They're asking you to, to be set apart. You, they're, they're asking you, you've been selected to be set apart as part of a group to then preside over the affairs of others. That's the word, church. But when Jesus used it, it's completely different. He said, I will build my church, my people. I will build them. I will infuse them with my Holy Spirit, and they'll be in the world but not off it. One day, the church believers are going to rule over the affairs of angels. One day, as you are faithful here, we're going to be a part of his millennial generation, his millennial administration, his millennial reign over there in Jerusalem after the second advent. Until then, let's be faithful in the little things. Church is people, the people of God. If you've surrendered to Jesus, the Holy Spirit puts you in the body of Christ. You and I belong together. We have the same Father, whether you're here in Minnesota or whatever. If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, He's put you in this spiritual glorious thing known as the body of Christ, an aspect of the bride of Christ here on the earth now. And, 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 and there's a part of the, of the bride of Christ there in glory as well. Thank God for the body of Christ. I said thank God for the people of God, the body of Christ. Gloria alluded to it earlier on. The body of Christ. Believers, the church, called out and empowered by the Holy Ghost. Somebody said amen. The people. The people, the redeemed, Holy Spirit's been poured out. And then Peter, who had tuck tail and left Dodge, he was a coward with the other 11. They sold Jesus out, not just Peter. They all fled from Jesus when he was undergoing the kangaroo court there before he would die for the sins of humanity. They all tuck tail and left Dodge. Well, he's a transformed man now, so we pick up in verse 40. Chapter 2, verse 40, the Holy Spirit has come in fullness and power. The church is empowered by the Spirit of God. And so in verse 40 of chapter 2, read with me. And with many words, he testified and exhorted them. Peter, the denier, denied Jesus three times. Is now Peter, the declarer. He's gotten boldness now. At one time, his bravery was actually deflated. Now he is in Theo, he is in God, he gets up and he shares. And the difference between the two is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness and impetus and power to witness for Christ. We need the Holy Spirit. Those of you who stood and said, I'm availing myself to you, say it out loud. Or maybe everybody, if it applies to you, say it. Say, I need you, Holy Ghost. I need you, Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I pray that every time, every moment of the day. I need you, I need you, I need you. I'm a wreck without you. 
Verse 40, with, with many other words, he testified, Peter, and he exhorted them. And he said, be saved from this perverse generation. Read along with me. Then those who gladly received his word were immersed, baptizo, baptized, immersion is the word. And that day about what? How many? 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, or the Greek word is legach, which means teaching. Don't let that word throw you. It's a good word. The apostles' doctrine or teachings and fellowship, koinonia, comma, in the breaking of bread and in prayer. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Praise God for this. The prayers of the saints. If you notice this morning, I walked up here without my crutches. If you notice this morning, something had happened in my leg and the saints were praying for me. And uh, you have a praying people and I'm walking. I'm walking. Praise God. You're a walking miracle. God actually sustained Pat Sabe's life. He beat the doctor's clock. There are many doctors. Praise God for them. Some of them may be in our midst. Some of them may be listening right now around the world. There are many doctors, but there's only one great physician. And that physician, he's got a different clock. And like I said before, I'll say it again. I don't care what the fat lady says. It ain't over till Jesus says it's over. As long as there's a call on your life. I don't care if you're in a plane crash. If God's not done with you when that plane crash, you're walking out of there. They tried to kill Jesus more than once. Ain't nobody touched him. Then finally he says, all right, I'm here in Golgotha. I'm headed towards Jerusalem, Passover. And then he says, no one takes my life. I give it away freely. And the fact that you're here this morning is because there's a call on your life. Do not waste your life. Don't waste it away. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't waste your life. We are all wired by nature to love the same toys that the world loves. We start to fit in if we're not careful. We start to love what others love. We start to call earth our home. And before you know it, we're calling luxuries needs. And we're using our resources and money just the way non-believers do. And we begin to forget that we're in spiritual warfare. That God's called us on a mission. We don't think much about people perishing. Missions and unreached people, people group, they drop out of the peripherals of our mind. We stop dreaming about the triumphs of glory. Next thing you know, we sink into secular mindset that looks first to what men can do. And it, uh, it, uh, turns God, uh, it turns us away from God. We disregard Him. It is a terrible sickness. But we thank God for those who God brings along the way again and again and again to remind us there's more to life than this. Our life must matter. All lives matter, according to John 3.16. Not just some, all lives matter for God so loved the world. And because all lives matter, if you turn your life over to Jesus, you're part of God's reaching out his heartbeat to those around the world who still need to hear of the greatest love story ever, that a holy God from his pavilion in glory broached our time-space continuum and he stepped into our terra firma and came through the Lord Jesus Christ to win us over with his love to die and rise again for us. We're in the corridors of Passover, Pesach. We thank God for Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Give the Lord a hand, would you please? We thank God for the Lamb of God. All right. Turning my mic down over there, you guys okay? Is there a feedback? If there's a feedback, I'll throw something at Shiloh. <clears throat> All right. Verse 43. And then fear came. There's reverence in every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now, read on with me. Now all who believed were together, and they all had th everything in common. They sold their possessions and goods, and they divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. There are two segments of the body of Christ. Every airplane has a dual wing. One wing, the congregation, gathering together in the body of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Do not forsake the assembly of the righteous, as is the manner of some, especially since the day, the day of the Lord, the day is at hand. It's good to always find a local church that preaches the gospel, the unashamed gospel, the unadulterated love of God, and stick there. Commit yourself to it there. Be known. Let your character be known and be a part of what God's doing. Commit to. This is our gathering every Sunday. However, look at it. It's not just a co the corporate gathering. 
but there's a house to house as well. There are home churches. There's fellowship happening. That's the other wing of the airplane. One, the, the corporate gathering to remind yourself that God is bigger than what we can see, that I belong to the body and they belong to me because the believer is a belonger. And secondly, in the home church setting, that's where we actually get in touch in a deeper way and avail ourselves to the Holy Ghost so He can allow the plow of His Spirit to actually dig deeper and bring forth a glorious garden as we yield to Him, unearthing every stone, breaking the fallow ground, and bringing forth a glorious harvest. So you need both, a corporate gathering and house to house. That's what they did. They ate food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praise God. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord, Kurios, sovereign in the Greek, added to the body, the people, not the building, the people, daily, those who were being saved. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit-filled believer, Holy Spirit-filled assembly, church, ecclesia, to be called out, to be called out. Begs the question, what is a spirit-filled church? What does it look like? There are a bunch of churches that fall under the category spirit-thrilled. Spirit-thrilled. These people with cut blanche, they will actually claim everything that's happening to be of the spirit they're always maximized in zeal, zero d discernment. Watch out for those. They're spirit thrilled. The other category are the hokey spirit crew. And this is the racket that everything there is from Fun Factory to Chuck E. Cheese Factory to Broadway, this circus here. Everybody, it's a feel good club. Let, let's just get together and all feel good. Entertainment run amok. There's the spirit thrilled, and then there's the hokey spirit category. And then there's the Holy Spirit filled church, the real Holy Ghost filled. How do you know if you're in a spirit filled church? Well, I'm glad you asked. And so, how blessed we are to have the Word of God. So, let's dive right into this book right now. We just read it from the text. What does a spirit-filled church look like? We're doing it every day. That's why I had you. If you have your bulletin, take a look-see. Don't worry about it. I'm still good up here. Y'all okay? okay over there? All right. Don't put me on a tether. Mm. Hallelujah. You, if you have your pen, get your pens ready. What does a Holy Spirit Filled believer, body of believers. How do you know if you're in a spirit-filled fellowship? We just read from the book of Acts, and here are some thoughts. And the Lord, read with me, and the Lord added to the body of believers, ecclesia, ecclesia, to be called out daily, such as should be saved. Acts chapter 2, verse 47, the latter part of it. Okay. So what does it look like? Well, if you're taking notes, jot it in. There is growth in attention. Somebody said attention. The body develops an appetite. They love the Word of God. Verse 42 of chapter 2 says that they continued in the apostles' teachings or doctrine, which was true to God's Word. How do you know if you're in a spirit-filled church? There is an appetite. There is a love for the Word of God. Your Word is sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. Give me your Word, O God. I want your Word and your Word alone. The second aspect of a Spirit-filled church, a body. Verse 45 says that they sold their possessions and they shared their resources. Verse 45. How do you know? Well, point number two, there's growth in affection. Can you say affection? There is a love for one another. So much so that if someone's hurting, people show up on deck. It's ohana. It's spiritual ohana. It's the body of Christ. It's impossible to have a love for Jesus purportedly and not have a love for the body of Jesus. 
There is a love. We belong together. We are the same Savior. How can I help? We just read it from the text. How can we help out? Each helping according to what the Lord has provided. If it's cleaning up the yards over there or visiting the widows or, you know, all this stuff. It's, there's an affection that we, you, you, someone said, you guys are contagious. I've heard that again. They go, you guys are contagious. You love the Lord and you guys like each other too as a fellowship. That's a rarity. Someone said, we're actually considering moving here. I said, let me pray on that. You may corrupt the work here. We had a good laugh over it. Everyone's looking for the perfect church. There's none. There's only one in glory. If you find the perfect church, don't join it because it will be blemished. However, one of the signs that you're in a spiritual church is there's a love for one another. Turn around and hug somebody again, please. Just turn around. Turn around and hug somebody. There's just a love that's there. Even those who have the invisible sign that says, don't touch me. Hug them. Hug them. Thirdly, they were in the temple daily. There is growth in attendance. Attendance. People show up. Something We expect. Something to happen. We love. There's something different about when we get together. There's something glorious. And so we attend. Not just because it's a commandment. But we attend because there's just this. We just, we marvel together on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis. We're here. Wednesday nights. Come on out. If you are coming this Wednesday night. I want you to read up in the book of Daniel, please, because we are going to identify this Wednesday the nations that are already gathering now. Turkey, the premier of Turkey has declared he's going to raise an Islamic army to expunge Israel. They're coming against the Abrahamic covenant. So please get the word out. It's prophecy watch. It's in the word of God. Do your homework. Read up on Daniel before you show up here. And Daniel's only got 12 chapters, so you should be good. Okay? The fourth aspect of a spirit-filled church. In chapter 5, verse 29. Read that with me, please. Go to chapter 5. They were in a quandary. They were being muscled. The word of God was attempted to be muzzled, and they were persecuted as a result of it. Chapter 5, verse 29. They took their lashings, but yet they came to a concise decision. And they said in verse 29, chapter 5, Acts of the Holy Ghost. That's another error. I'll address it again. It is not called the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles are not They're one big goose egg. They're zilts, just like you and I. We are one royal goose egg without the Holy Ghost. The beauty of the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit promise given by Jesus after he died and rose again. He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you shall be my witnesses, witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. The hero of the book of Acts. It's not the apostles. It's the Holy Ghost. And that's the same Holy Ghost you and I have today. The Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. We need Him always. In our marriages, in our homes, we need you. I need you, Holy Ghost, like I need uh, uh, my breath and air, oxygen, in order to leave. I need you. Verse 29. Read out loud with me. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, say it. We ought to obey God rather than men. They said, they were told, don't preach this gospel again. Don't even do this again. They they took their lashings. They were incarcerated. They were whipped. And they're out there in the square, public square, sharing again, shining, being salt and being light. And the news came back to the religious hierarchy. Those guys are out there again preaching and sharing. And they said, listen, didn't we have a run in with you? Didn't we caution you? They go, you know what? When your civil decrees 
will cause you to be disobedient towards your heavenly decree. You come under, you come away from civil decrees and you honor the Lord. Pray for those over you. Pray for them. But when it becomes an issue of conscience and they're asking you to do something that violates the word of God, take the stand of the apostles. Take that attitude. I would rather obey God than man. Somebody said amen. Growth in attitude. As people are growing in, attend, you know, in their attention span and as we are growing in our affection, as we continue to make the attendance, there is a growing and a proper attitude. Jesus, Jesus only saves. His love, His, His beauty, His majesty. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to all who believe. The power of God unto salvation for all who believe, first to the Jew, then to the Greeks. Everyone out there, never be ashamed to shine in your life. And when God opens up a door to declare, declare it. Have the right attitude. Point number five. The entire book of Acts refreshes us this way. Growth in anointing as we fellowship in the Holy Ghost. Don't yield. That's why we take time. You, you, there's a call in your life. There's an unction in your life. God's given an anointing on your life. Be faithful there. In your heart, in your home, in your neighborhood, in your society, there's an anointing upon the church. Grow in that anointing. We all have different podiums. Be faithful there. Avail yourself. And there's my, I submit my, my thoughts there on point echo. The, uh, the accurate and proper name of the book of Acts. What is it? Acts of God the Holy Ghost. God the Holy Spirit. It's not Acts of the Apostles. It's Acts of the Holy Ghost. He's the one. He's the paracletos. He's the helper. He's the one that pulls it off for the glory of Jesus. The second category of a Holy Ghost filled believer, a body of believers, the church, how do you know? First is a growing church. Mr. Julian Reese. Brother Reese, can you raise your hand so I could see you? Way back over there. You see him? Keep the, stand to your feet, brother. Stand to your feet, my brother from the same father. This past Wednesday, we had a young in heart over here. Young at Heart Ministry, those who are 60 year old and above. And then at the end of the meeting, I said, the way to be young at heart is to surrender your life to Jesus. He gave his life to the Lord. Give the Lord a hand, would you please? <laughs> he gave his life to Jesus. No, not perfect. No one is. But righteous by the blood. Now he's walking. And it's, he's in the body. He's a cell in the body, and the body is gathering together, and we've all been invigorated by the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The Bible says when one comes to the Lord, there's rejoicing in heaven. Our, our joy, our goal ought to be let's make sure that the rejoicing in heaven continues forever. That's how do you do that? You drop net here on the earth. Drop net. Every time there's someone who says yes to Jesus and I'm surrendering to you, there's a party in heaven. They strike up the band. Yes, someone has come home. The Lamb of God has been glorified again. Let's make sure that, there's, that that party in heaven is not intermittent. Let's drop net and see what God will do. He is faithful. He loves people. Say it. Say God loves people. Second category. First, being a growing church. The second, let's read the verse together. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. We, that's almost verbatim of what we just read in Acts chapter 2, isn't it? But that's chapter 5. This is a going church. Say it. A what? A going church. Here we Croatians. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. We are a great commission, John 360, John 316, Great Commission DNA Fellowship. God's called us to go in your heart, in your home, in your marriage, and then to your neighbors, and then to the nations. Our calling, it's right there on your note template. God has called us to know Him intimately, to enjoy Him immensely, and to make Him known intentionally. That's the DNA that we have. That's why I wanted to 
if you have a bulletin, just, just wave it at me. Waving it. Wave your bulletin at me. See all those ministries going on, and there's more being birthed. We're going. Hey, Eddie would go. Jesus went, and he's telling the church, would you go? Would the church go? Our life must count. We must surrender ourselves. We must be reminded constantly that he is not just our Savior. He is our Lord. In his book, The Cost of Discipleship, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, When Christ calls a man, he bids him, come and die. Come, deny yourself, follow me. Surrender to me. There is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not cry, Mine, you belong to me. That's a reality. Going church. A spirit-filled church. Point number one. Read those notes there with me, please. Point number one. You can read in Acts chapter 6 yourself. A need arose for there to be deacons. The first deacons are mentioned. Stephen is one of them, and he's going to be the first one martyred. But he doesn't shy away from it. The attitude of the church there in the book of Acts. By the Holy Ghost, strengthened, invigorated. Problems could not stop them. Problems could not stop them. All the threats and even murder, they would martyr him. And he would look up before, as he's about to be martyred, or while they're pelting him with stones, they see he saw the Son of Man standing. The murder could not stop Stephen from serving Christ. And there are many who have been martyred and continue to be martyred. And they're stepping into glory, receiving the crown of life. Problems could not stop the church. It's been said that Christians are like tea bags. You see their potential when they're dropped in hot water. Pure gold fears no fire. There's a measure of suffering. We all have different measures. God's grace is sufficient. Be faithful there. Measure of suffering. Be faithful. Be aware of those who are suffering. Different measures. Do not compare badges or status. Keep looking to Jesus. Pray for one another. And courage daily. Somebody said amen. The second, category, the second uh, 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 point there. First is problems. Paul could say that despite his sufferings, nothing would make him give up Christ. You can read that in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Persecution could not stop the church. Different measures of fire. Persecution comes. Someone says, well, tongues is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. I said, that's it? Jesus said, those who believe, they'll speak in new tongues. He said that. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than anyone else. I can't, can't, I can't remove that from the word. It's there. I didn't write the book. I'm just reading it. I've got to put my biases aside. But I don't see just tongues. There's another T. That's evidence of the spirit-filled church. It's called trouble. Somebody said amen. Trouble. And that's why God gives us the ability, I believe, the Bible says, as the spirit gives the utterance, that we can edify ourselves in the midst of trouble. And there are various, various ways that God does this. Point Charlie. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel, nor did he shy away from criticism. It did not. He didn't allow it to sway him. People could not stop them. Many tried. People. And you'll always have that. It's par for the cause. But you've got to press on. A spirit-filled church knows how to endure. Colleen quoted Jesus this morning. In this world, you will have tribulations. That is a promise that you will not find in the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it promise book. People, they tried, but they couldn't. They couldn't stop them. 
Holy Ghost, unstoppable. And lastly, wherever he was, Paul was content. We read from Philippians this morning. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And when you've done that, that the shalom of God garrison your heart, the shalom that surpasses all understanding. Did you know that that sounds good and very fairy tale ish Did you know the context of Philippians? Because without the context, you won't appreciate what he's saying. Paul was actually chained at the, in a dungeon when he's saying this. He's, pr- he's in change for the sake of the gospel, and he's, he's got 24-hour, you know, 24-7 watch. They will rotate on him, and he's chained to the floor because of the gospel of Jesus. And yet he could say, be anxious for nothing. Uh, rejoice. Uh, again, I say rejoice. And you go, Wait. Sounds like the guy's got his iPad and is on Facebook and is chilling out there at Cinnabons. No. Nothing. It's, 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 I mean, perish the thought. That's the context. He's under persecution. But apparently, the Holy Spirit, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we're told in Philippians, can keep him even in dungeons. The Romans saw Paul as a prisoner. Paul, a prisoner of the gospel. Paul, by the Holy Ghost, saw the Romans as his prisoners. No, they're rotating you in and out. You get to hear the gospel, huh? Yeah, you stay right there. I got you. They're saying, Paul, you're my prisoner. No, you're my captive audience. You know, you're my prisoner. I'm free here. We've changed, but I'm free. And then you come on to, you know, Whatever is good and noble. Ah, wait, Paul, wait a minute. Think on these things. No, I'd be thinking about my change and how I I want to get out of here, be sprung from here. Whatever is good, whatever is noble. That's the context. He's in prison. Think on these things. Amazing. He's learned to be content. Acts chapter 16, verse 20 to 33. Paul and Silas in prison for the gospel. And they've had a good lashing. Read it. Please read it. You're Bereans. Don't take my word from it. My word for it. Don't take any pastor, any preacher's word for it. I gave you the notes. You studied for yourself. I love you. I'll lay my life down for you. No worries. I already made that commitment when I forfeited my life over 30 years ago when Christ found me at the end of a noose back in Fiji. No problem. I appreciate your friendship, I appreciate the aloha, but we all owe the Son of God, the only one that died and rose again for us. We owe Him our adoration and our allegiance. And so I take the time. We take the time to break the word God, and I want you to see it. I want you to, to grasp it. I want you to get it, because we're all ambassadors here. When you surrender to Jesus, we're all ambassadors here. Ladies and gentlemen, they got a good lashing. They were in prison. You read it, you'd love it. And Paul began to sing. Begins to sing. He's in prison, he begins to sing. It's easy to praise God. We're in beautiful, cold, in the place of joy. How about when you're in prison? Where will our praise be? That's dapped in the Holy Ghost. Malia and them just got back from the Philippines. Man, she got up. You know, that lady is a trooper. They hiked up to the mountains, hiked up to the mountains, like National Geographic's mountains, you know. Hiked up there. He begins to sing. I can just see it happening. Paul begins to sing. He first started off as a solo. This is the day that the Lord has made change, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Can yank, no, change, no. I will rejoice and be glad. And probably Silas says, hey, man, that sounds pretty good. I'm going to back you up. The solo became a duet. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Before the song was over, God said, that sounds really good. I'm going to step in and make it a trio. And God shows up and boom, they got sprung. Set them free. 
and the guard that was assigned to them, when he realized that they had been sprung, he was about to fall on his own sword because Roman law says if, an, if a prisoner is assigned to you, if they escape, your life for theirs. And he's about to, and they stopped him. They says, no, 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 hold on. We're still here. We're good, man. We're good. We're good. Hold on. The guy got saved. How could you not get saved? After a concert like that. Learn to be content with where you are, pressing in towards the Lord, even in prisons. We go out to the prisons, to the juvenile correction center, and we share. This is a church that's going. Your bulletin identifies it. We're going. Come on out. Find a ministry spot that you have an impetus for. That anointing in your life matters. Look at the various ministries and come on out and engage. Come on out and connect. It's not just a church that is growing. In a couple of Sundays, we're going to have this place stacked out. It's Resurrection Sunday, the 1st of April. Ha happens to be our 15th anniversary as well since we launched the fellowship back in 2003. The people are growing. Families are growing. Children are getting up and sharing. We're a church that's growing. We're a church that's going. God's called us to make an impact in our society, in our communities. And to the nations. Listen to this as we close. God is pursuing with omnipotent passion a worldwide purpose of gathering joyful worshipers for himself. From every tribe and tongue and people and nation. He has an inexhaustible enthusiasm for the supremacy of his name among the nations. Therefore, let us bring our factions into line with his. And for the sake of his name, let us renounce the quest for worldly comforts and let us join in his global purpose. A spirit-filled church. A church, a believer that draws close to Jesus. Anyone that draws close to Jesus will naturally become a missionary at heart. Will you surrender Will you commit yourself to missions? Will you commit yourself to sharing your testimony? Will you get radical enough in the Lord, in Jesus, to believe God for one opportunity per week to share your testimony, what God has done? If not, let us not be found colluding with apathy let us not be found immersed in our luxuries. Let us not. Thank God for the blessings. Enjoy them. But if we aren't careful, we get lulled into it. And we forget, this is not home. I'm a pilgrim. I'm passing through. I'm headed home. And I'm here to make a difference. Let us not conspire with atrophy, spiritual atrophy and be leth lethargical. Let's be on fire every moment of the day. Praying for those who are above us. Praying for our peers. Praying for those who are need to be impacted below us. From various spheres of life. And sharing your testimony. What has Jesus done in your life? Where did he find you? Remember the chains that once held you bound. If you forget where God found you, we will become ungrateful. And when we are ungrateful, we are clamped up. And there is a, a gag order called fear that the enemy uses to muzzle from us the greatest love story that needs to be told. That a holy God has a passion for fallen humanity. And he has done everything he ever could through Christ. And God has turned to the church and says, I've empowered you by my Holy Ghost. Share. Will you commit to missions? Not just crossing the sea, but seeing the cross. Will you commit to every day with Jesus? Lord, I'm going to share. I'm going to shine and I'm going to share. That's evidence, fruits of a spirit-filled believer. Of spirit-filled believers. It's not just about me and Jesus. It's me, Jesus, the body of Jesus, and Jesus' love for the lost. Would you stand to your feet this morning?
How many of you here this morning will say, yes, I will commit. I will be a spirit-filled believer. No, I'm not going to be. Maybe some of you have had, and some of us, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a unique thing. Maybe you've heard it for the first time. It's in our appetites. There is a yearning sometimes, if we aren't careful, to be in the spirit thrilled. Cut blanche, no discernment. Need the reverence of God there. Some, if we aren't careful, we find ourselves in the hokey spirit crew. That racket. It's all about entertainment. It's all about me. This generation is all about me. Hashtag me. I love me. If anything, if anything, the current state of affairs should convince us we need Jesus. If anything, we need Jesus. And, uh, you know, we say in our bumper stickers, what would Jesus do? Well, it's already clear what he does. The real question is, what will I do about what Jesus is calling me to? Will the body of Jesus please just be Jesus to a lost world? Thank God we're not alone. We have the Holy Ghost to help us through. Welcome to Acts of the Holy Spirit. Will you commit to right where you are? Take a few moments and talk to the Lord. Lord, I'm going to, yes, I've, Lord, I want to be ready in season. I'm availing myself. I see a common theme, a common thread here this morning. Lord, my mind has been all about myself, inflated. Oh, God, forgive me. I want not my will, but your will be done. I'm surrendering, Lord, to that call. Every great call begins with saying yes to Jesus. Take a few moments. Pray that dangerous prayer. Pray that dangerous prayer. Lord, use me. I'm believing you, Lord, for that open door once a week to share my testimony with somebody. I'm believing you. Some of you may have faith for two, some three. Lord, giving me an open door. You know, don't limit God. Believe God for it. Your neighbors, your ambassadors there, your workmates, your ambassadors there. Of course, don't share during work time, but during lunchtime, when you're off the clock, share. People around us need the Lord, and God's got us exactly where He wants us. Be spirit-filled. Surrender to Him. Surrender to His will. Yes, Lord. Yes, your heart is for missions, local and global. Raise up your children. Talk to them about missions. There's a call on their life. There's an anointing on their lives. These are just two very simple characteristics of a spirit-filled believer, a spirit-filled body of believers that we see in the book of Acts of the Holy Ghost. More to come. But right now, let's digest this. Believe God for opportunities throughout the week, even today before the sun sets. There are people hurting. People need the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's call out to the Lord together. Thank you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Give me your compassion, Lord. I need you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love for our neighbors. Thank you for your love for our generations. Thank you for your love for, our, for the republic, for the states. Thank you, Lord, that your body is still here. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, that we're never alone. Thank you, Lord. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Yes, Lord. Take your liberty. If you need to move to the left, move to the right, move forward. Come to the aisles. Hey, I'm your brother. I'm not your Lord. Take your liberty. Thank you, Lord. You want to sit? You want to kneel? It's fine. Let's pray it out again. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my Blessed Savior, I surrender.
Sing it up. Say it again. Who I surrender on. Jesus, I said I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. If you are here this morning and you have never surrendered to Jesus, you are his mission statement. You are his prerogative. His passion is towards you. He came to seek and save the lost. You've gone to religion. You've gone to everyone else that mattered to you. You've never gone to Jesus. This morning, the Spirit of God, by the Holy Ghost, I implore you, surrender to Christ today. If that's you, come forward. You're here. You've never surrendered to Christ. The body of believers, the ekkaleo, the ekklesia here in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of his people, in the presence of the host, seen and unseen, surrender to Christ today. Let him be your Passover lamb. If that's you, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I'll pray with you. Yes, Pastor Easy. I've gone to church, but I've never gone to Jesus. Today, I want to turn my life over to him. If that's you, come forward. Everyone praying, if that's you, come forward. We preach the gospel here. We love the gospel. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. His passion for humanity. How about the prodigal? You once walked with God. I'm just like the prodigal. Father's house. The Bible says it took a few days for the father to gather the inheritance in order to meet the prodigal, soon to be departed, the prodigal's request. That may very well be because of the accumulation of wealth in the inheritance or that it was so painful to the father that it took him a few days to compose himself. And yet through free will, he would actually facilitate that decision. You're here this morning. You once walked with the Lord, but like a prodigal, you walked away. God loves the prodigals today. If that's you, come on over. The Lord beckons, he calls. The Bible says the prodigal came to his senses. Will you come to your senses today? Surrender to Jesus now. Surrender to him. If that's you, come forward. Come forward. We'll pray with you. There's a body of incredible believers here. All trophies of righteousness will stand with you. You're a prodigal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brother, uh, Brother Reese, who just gave your life to the Lord Wednesday, come on forward. Bro. Come on forward. We'll pray for you. Where are you, Brother Reese? Come on forward. Where are you? Julian Reese. There you go. Thank you, Lord. Stay right there so the body have access to you. You guys gather around him and bless the brother in the Lord. Gather around him and pray a blessing on our brother. Pray a blessing. Just like Sister Colleen was said, he gave his life to the Lord, but you know those things are calling. There are enemies on him. But listen, God is faithful. Pro go ahead and raise your voices together and just pray a prayer of blessing over our brother. Thank you, Lord. Let's do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mahalo, 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 Jesus Christ. Bless him, bless him. Bless him in Jesus' name. Bless them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the body of Christ. Bless the Reese family today. Bless the house of Reese, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Greater is he that is in him than he that is in the world. For the spirit that raised Christ from the dead abides in him. Thank you, Lord. Give him a burning desire and a love for your word. Thank you, Lord. Just bless him. Bless the Reese family today. Bless him, Lord. Bless the Reese, Ohana. Thank you, Lord, for a new beginning, a new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As the body's there, how many of you right there standing, you say, right now, I need prayers. Just raise your hand. Let me see you. Right there, body of Christ, look around. 
How many of you right now where you stand, just raise your hand, hoist that flag if you need prayer for you, for your family. Just raise your hand. Raise them up high. Raise them up high. Body of Christ, you're right there. You're mobile. Gather around those who have their hands raised and just pray for them. Just gather around them and pray for them. Those who have their, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. As they're praying for you, you call out to the Lord. Trust him. Go for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Deliverance in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's raise our voices. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Faithful and awesome God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless him, bless him. Bless our nation. We bless our property here, this beautiful resort. We bless everyone that's coming in. And, uh, Lord, those who are going, Lord, the commuting back and forth, Lord. Bless them. Bless Colina. Bless our beautiful resorts. Mahalo, 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 me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Colleen and uh, Roger, raise your hand. I know you're right in the, in the thick of it. Can you guys work your way to the middle? Right in the middle of that intercession bullseye there, right there. Right in the middle. Right in the middle of that. Guys, these guys are flying home on Friday. I know they're going to be here on Wednesday if they can. If you want to see them again, come and harass them on Wednesday. But they're working their way. Let's pray a blessing on them. I don't know about you guys, but I've been blessed by them. They're connected. Incredible. You know, Roger's been coming out with Colleen to the first Tuesday's visitation at the Shriners there. They mean, just all kinds. We were blessed by the word of the Lord last week, Wednesday, I'm sorry, last Sunday, when he shared on being clipped on and connected to Jesus, amen. That's already been uploaded to the site, and then today, woohoo, man, hallelujah. What a spiritual mix play, it's like loco moco today. Pray a blessing on them, Lord, we bless the mayor, Ohana. Thank you for Roger, thank you for Colleen and their faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your love towards them. Lord, their love, not just for you, that's very clear, but their love for the body. Bless the Ohana back in Minnesota. Lord, we bless them and we commission them to the will of God. Traveling mercies, Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for family. Thank you, Lord. Bless Gloria as well and Chantel. Bless Pastor Ray, Guillermo, and Sister Lena as well up there. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you can turn, face forward right where you are, turn around for the benediction. Let's raise our hands to the heavens together one last time. And now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling, to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the saint said, Lord, bless, sanctify the food and the fellowship for the glory of Jesus. Bless these ambassadors. We thank you, Lord. We ask for more of you, not just this week, but today, more of your Holy Ghost for the glory of Jesus. Now, let's say it together. Ready? Out loud. The church has left the building, gone fishing. Lord bless you.